So let's talk about the intelligent flight modes. And um, we've got three of them, and then we have subcategory. We have our focus track, we have our quick shots, and then we have our hyperlapse. In the focus track, there's actually three different ways that you can do this. You have what we call Spotlight. This is the version 2.0. We have active, active Track, which is version 3.0. And we have the Point of Interest, which is also version 3.0. So let's talk about Spotlight first. Spotlight is something that is going to allow you to fly freely while keeping the camera right on the subject. And this is actually pretty cool. This is what I spend hours with my student when I teach them how to manually fly the UAS is uh, trying to keep the subject right in the middle. Well, this does it automatically. Let's say that you wanted to take a selfie of yourself and then rotate around yourself. Or if you wanted to rotate around a, a rock, okay? Then you can actually select the rock on the screen right here and you can start to move with the aircraft control. You can go higher up, you can go lower, you can go further, you can go closer, you can yaw to the left or to the right. And, uh, and this will keep the object right in the middle. An orbit is very simple to do with this. You're gonna select the subject in the middle and then the right stick goes to the right or it goes to the left. And then now you're gonna do an orbit around this object. If you use the left stick to climb or descend and you still have the right stick going right or left, then you can do an orbit and climb and descend at the same time, which makes it very, very simple, okay? You have to be at least three and a half feet above the ground in order to use this, uh, this functionality right here. So go ahead and practice. Go ahead and practice this thing, uh, the, the spotlight. This is actually really cool and very easy to use. I can see people, uh, if you wanted to do this, for example, for uh, shooting a house and you wanted to do like a full uh, um, rotation around it, a full orbit, and this is a good way that you could do it without having really any skills. Now, I would recommend that you learn how to do this just because I'm a stick and rudder guy. I actually like to fly the drone, but if you wanted to do it quick, then this is one way to do it very easily. The next thing is active track and active track is going to allow you to do the same thing I just talked about, but now your object is moving. If your subject is moving over a certain distance, then this thing is going to keep track of it as it's active, active track. There's two different modes. We have the trace mode where the drone is actually going to follow you. Okay. And it's going to follow the object wherever it goes. And, uh, and this thing is really good. I, I was running in the rocks, as you can see right here in the background, and uh, basically have the object, just the drone following me going all over the place. And uh, the only time that it didn't work too well is when I went right under the drone. It had a little bit of a hard time and it stopped tracking me, but otherwise it really did a great job. In this case, you do have access to the sensors. So a couple times I actually went uh, higher than where the drone was located and it followed me, which is really cool. Uh, it went up, it went down, and it basically kind of tried to maintain that distance. And, uh, but be careful, again, we don't have any side sensors, so any kind of movement going to the side, it's not gonna pick it up. The maximum speed in this case, in tripod mode and in normal mode, is gonna be 18 miles an hour. Now, I don't run 18 miles an hour, so that was actually pretty safe. If you wanna go faster, doing this with a car maybe, then it's gonna be 42 miles an hour in sports mode. Okay, then we have the mode with the parallel and the parallel is gonna keep a constant angle and a constant distance from the side. In this case, you have to again be careful, we don't have an obstacle sensing uh, capability on the side. So be careful because there you could actually hit something very easily. So do this in an open field. In this case, actually the drone can go faster, surprisingly, it can go 27 miles an hour in tripod mode and in normal mode and still 42 miles an hour in sports mode. So it's actually faster to track object in parallel mode than it is in trace mode. But this will turn. It doesn't just go in a straight line. The trace mode will follow you and make turns to keep you basically right behind. If the drone is in front of you and you're moving forward, then it's gonna move backward to keep that distance away from you. And then if you go, so try it. This is something that's really cool. Go to an open field and, uh, and try those two different modes. They're really, really easy to use. Now, how do you use them? You're gonna select your subject and then you're gonna click on the active track section and then you can choose between your trace and your parallel mode. And the way that you do this, you're gonna activate it by either clicking on the go or you can wave your arm above your shoulder and then it's gonna start the uh, start recording or it's gonna start following you. Then you also need to record manually. 
Then we have point of interest, point of interest 3.0. This is going to be circling above the object. Remember the previous one, the active track is gonna follow you either parallel or chasing you. In this case, it's gonna be doing an orbit and an orbit as you move forward. Now that orbit actually can be done on a stable object, on a moving object. And uh, again, this thing is pretty cool. Now be careful with this one. Again, we don't have side sensors and this thing is gonna be doing an orbit. Um, the area where I flew and tested this thing had uh, tall trees, it was very windy, and there were a lot of rocks. So I had to be very careful and keep an eye on it at all time. But as I was running, this thing was just going. You can change the speed. So this is how you're gonna access it right here. Again, you're gonna select your object on the, on the, uh, the window and on your app, and then you're gonna go into the point of interest, and then you're gonna click go, and then you can change the speed and going into one direction or the other, clockwise or counterclockwise, and it does the rest. And again, you can activate it with go, or you can actually wave your arm, and it's gonna get started. Some limitations with the focus track options, the three that I just gave you. Be careful when you do this around people, because you may not be paying a whole lot of attention to your surrounding, you don't want to fly over people. You don't want to fly near small or fine objects like branches, okay? Then you tree, your, uh, your drone ends up in the tree. All these automated modes are great. They do really great uh, cinematic moves, but you also have to be careful with your surrounding. That's how you lose your drone. So I would recommend that you don't use these. If you haven't flown a drone before, just get a little bit more comfortable before you start using all this automation right here. Also remember that we have the RTH button on our remote controller. That RTH button is gonna allow us to pause uh, anything that's going on. So if you notice that the drone starts moving and you wanna stop it, then you're gonna push that button and then it's gonna stop. Also, I need to mention that at all time, you can actually still control the drone with any of these. So uh, especially with the first one, obviously you're gonna lock your object and you're gonna start moving around with the, act the spot. Uh, but even with the other ones, you can go closer, you can go further away, you can climb, you can descend, and it's going to continue doing its thing. So that's actually really cool. If you And I recommend that you, if you do this by yourself, um, that you have either a visual observer with you helping you, or that you always have this controller in your hand so you can control the drone in case something happens. Do not put the controller down, go run or go on your bike and whatever, and come back and get the controller because you're technically not in control of the drone anymore and uh, this is not something that the regulation allows you to do. Now also be careful, this is all based on the fact that the, uh, the camera is still pointing at you and it's still looking for you and for your shape. So if you're following yourself or if you're following another object, then be careful because uh, if there's another moving object around it, it can actually swap and catch that object and start following it. So uh, wear something that's pretty high contrast when you do this so the drone can still see you. And uh, also, if you go behind a tree or something, there is some technology to help you and uh, to help the system figure out where you're gonna be, but it doesn't always work. So if you go and hide behind a tree or if you hide behind a rock or behind something, and then uh, it loses you, then make sure that you keep looking at your controller and make sure you're still in the frame. Also be careful with snow. From the manual, it says that it doesn't do too well in the snow. So, um, and low light condition is the same thing. Snow and low light conditions, uh, you're gonna have a little bit more of a hard time. I know you see all these previews for these uh, drones and you see people in snow and uh, going down the slope, but uh, it doesn't always work very well.